Before we begin, I'd like to do a quick brief on this new exploration series I call a Virgin Games Playthrough. Although most of these games were around when I was younger, um, I never had a computer or had one with internet capability, so finding such games was hard. Uh, being in a small town as well meant no stores to get the games. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to give these a spin and um, give them a poorly Russian review without the uh, rose-tinted glasses, so to speak. That being said, uh, let's begin. And uh, also a quick note, um, practicing some of this microphone stuff, so uh, I try not to sound like a robot, but it's pretty hard to do. A future, if not already classic, side-scroller developed in 1992 by Apogee Software you're a rather pixelated Agent 006, and your mission is to secure the plans to some laser satellites. If you're into Commander Keen and Portal, this one is easy to pick up and get straight into, and there are three episodes set out as missions, and uh, we're playing the first, The Hunt for Red Rock Rover. Uh, while researching this game, it turns out there is a speedrun completed for it. Um, you can check the video description if you would like to see that. Now, let's explore the slightly forgotten gem. Booting into the game, you're treated with the classic PC speaker beeping away there, and uh, loaded into the familiar maps. One thing I noticed is sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to navigate around, these uh, edges from the trees and buildings sometimes block your movements. Uh, reviewing the help menu tells you the whole story. Basically, you're a very usual 006, and you're tasked with um, retrieving the blueprints for the mega laser. Otherwise, uh, humankind will be melted like a crawfish in a boiling pot. And it's the usual story of fighting your way through the levels um, to complete the map and access the main fortress. Along the way, you'll be filling your pockets with keys, no doubt from a key bowl party. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, extra ammo, uh, some kind of um, speed, uh, gunpowder, and a barrel. Items of interest are not really that interesting, but you get uh, security radars to destroy the teleporter, dynamite to blow the doors off the exits and uh, the precious blueprints. Doors to exit, computer terminals for Pornhub and disabling security objects and the floppy disk that boots them. Bonus point items include these things and I gave up writing anything here so you can just read this for yourself. And the real boot of the levels is provided by vicious enemies you will encounter. We have the guard that moves at a snail's pace, the red guard that moves at about a walking pace, the ninja that swings a wet tea towel around like a roid rager in a gym locker room, the blue ninja that moves fast and shoots rocks at you, and lastly the thug who's just really like the blue ninja but naked. Some other characters you will bump into are a ceiling mounted stun gun, very annoying and frustrating. A floating electric corkscrew that showers you with electricity if you run under it. Some form of red LED on wheels and uh, some sort of evil blend tech blender that shoots at you if you get too close. In addition to that, there are some harder enemies. For starters, there's uh, evil Robocop with a personal space issue. Tin Man that should have stayed with his friends and um, ugly metal Clifford. Once loaded from a level selected from the map, you're straight into it. And I kind of miss the way all the games kind of just throw you straight in there, it's um, always exciting. Straight away you're navigating some of the usual and expected Apogee side-scrolling components. The time jumps are all here and definitely present, many of these to combat on your travels. Landmines also to avoid, I like having these here as, well I don't think they're that common in other Apogee games. And uh, one thing I figured out early is some of the robots explode and their flying metal, metal carcass can uh, give you damage. Once you have the floppy disk you can backtrack all the way back to the computer and disable the security systems. From there you pray you don't die on the way back over and proceed to destroying the radar. 
once the radar is destroyed, only then can you exit the level with the explosives. Some of the levels like this one can kill you upon entry, but um, once you figure out to stick to the sides you can get around such traps. Another thing on this level, I came across the most annoying enemy, it's those roof mounted stun gun robots. Um, you have to jump just at the correct height to shoot them. Uh, I used a lot of ammo and ended up just trying to you know, run past them over the kegs to get away from them. And if you can't reach some items, chances are there's hidden laser goggles that help with uh, seeing hidden platforms. So I kind of like these, it's a nice touch and breaks up the game and adds something new to the level. Given I have sponge cake fingers, I found the jumps, getting them just right was really hard and um, you know, this is an older game and uh, guess what? If you die, you have to go all the way back to the start. Second time around, you pray you don't screw it up. Um, sometimes I was too scared to keep going in case you know I died and had to go back through to the start, which is often really annoying and depending on the level, quite difficult. Also, these levitating platforms are tricky and really small, and being, me being greedy has bitten me before as I kept falling off them and dying. The barrel concept was something I hadn't actually seen in this sort of game before, but. Uh, basically you need to bring it with you to progress, without it you can get trapped, and sometimes if you push them too fast, they get stuck. Once again, you have to start from the beginning. I didn't enjoy some of the jumping, levels like this one took an hour for me to complete because I kept falling off or I jumped into the wrong spaces. Also, sometimes the jump key just didn't do anything and I fell to my death. Plenty of close calls as well on the levels, breaking up the excitement. The final level on the shareware release is a big chonky platformer. Uh, it's uh, not too hard to progress, but I did find getting the um, final blue key quite tricky, uh, often missing it and having to start from the beginning of the level. Um, and being careful not to get kebabbed. Once you finish the usual comp uh, mission complete screen, explaining that you escaped on a fancy jet powered life raft, and the very convenient information on how to order the game, assuming you live in 92 and you know, you can do that, and um, that's it. With that you're back at the main menu. Overall the shareware version provides a few hours of entertainment. As I said, if you've played other Apogee games like Commander King, Crystal Caves, Biomenace, then um, you'll be right at home. Uh, this would be one for your collection. And uh, I like this one because it's less frantic, but um, also a bit more strategic. It's not so hard that you can't figure your way around the puzzles. And sure, some of the levels are annoying and repetitive here and there, but you know, it's just a product product of its time really. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, trying other episodes and it was a lot of fun. Thanks again for watching everyone and um, hopefully the robotic voice from the uh, script reading wasn't too bad and um, as I said we'll work on that uh, voiceover. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.